what evil lurks in the hearts of men. The shadow knows. <laughs> Once again, we bring you the thrilling adventures of The Shadow, the hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcibly to old and young alike that crime does not pay. the forces of law and order, is in reality Lamont Cranston, wealthy young man about town. Years ago in the Orient, Cranston learnt a strange and mysterious secret. The hypnotic power to cloud men's minds so they cannot see him. Cranston's friend and companion, the lovely Margot Lane, is the only person who knows to whom the voice of the invisible shadow belongs. Today's drama, The Brief Fame of John Copper. In a large, sub-cellar room, illuminated by flickering lanterns, a group of tough-looking men take chairs. One man mounts the dais, wraps for order, and a strange meeting begins. The 33rd meeting of the royal mob is called to order. Order, please. Order. And now let us proceed with the meeting. Miss Harsh will call the room. <coughs> Snowy Allen? Sir? Louis Brady? Bluey Brady. Mark him absent, Miss Harsh. Happy Harmon? Yeah. Com Crandall? Com Crandall. Dear me, this is very strange. I believe I instructed all members to attend this meeting. There can be no excuse for Brady and Crandall not to show up. There is, boss. What's that? Why? Brady's dead, boss. And Crandall's in jail. What? It's that amateur detective fellow, Lamont Cranston, boss. He's been working with the police. He fixed Brady and Crandall. Oh, uh, yes. Mr. Cranston. That gentleman has been extremely annoying lately. You've got to do something about it, Chief. This makes seven members of the Cranstons removed in two months. Yes. So, oh. Gentlemen, oh. there is an old saying. Always meet an unusual problem with an unusual solution. I believe I have an idea that might work. Yeah? Let's hear it, what? It is simply this, gentlemen. I propose to have Mr. Cranston accused of a crime. But the police are his friends, Chief. Even if they were convinced, they'd think it was only a temporary lapse and they'd let him off lightly. True. And that is why I intend that the evidence against Mr. Cranston shall be watertight. Therefore, I'm going to see to it that he is captured and convicted... By the shadow. Uh, You're surprised, gentlemen? My thought is this. Even if the police help Cranston, when it reaches the ears of the shadow, he will see that he pays the full penalty. The shadow has always menaced crime. Now let him help us. You can't do it, boss. Mr. Happy Herman has the floor. You're not in your right mind. Nothing but trouble will come from getting mixed up with a shadow. You're out of order, Happy. But I'm not out of my head. What are you trying to do? Send us all to prison? I've done a lot of crazy things for you, but I'm not going to play around with a shadow. Where's your gun, Happy? Huh? What are you talking about? We always have to leave our guns outside. You know that, Chief. Yes, Happy. But mine isn't outside. No, boss. You don't trust your president, Happy. That's no good. I'm afraid you can't belong to us if you lack confidence. No, boss. No, for the, the love of The chair hereby declares you stricken from the road. Oh! Miss Harsh will appoint a committee to dispose of the body. Meeting adjourned. Oh, what a lovely day for a run in the car, Lamont. Where are we going? Well, I thought we'd drive through the park for a while, and then we can go and have tea with a friend of mine. Not Commissioner West. I can't picture him drinking tea. No, no, it's someone you haven't met, Margot. 
He's a delightful chap. Polished, suave, a connoisseur of art, literature, and fine living. Really? What's his name? Robert Stone. Robert Stone, eh? He sounds like a fascinating man. Yes, he is. I've met sophisticated men of the world, but nothing to equal Robert Stone. I'd call him the epitome of civilization. As I was saying, Miss Harsh, the epitome of crime is murder. We must have Mr. Cranston accused of murder, and nothing less than murder. But how are you going to do it, Chief? He's a pretty clever fellow. Cranston has one weak spot through which we can attack. You see, Miss Harsh, since Cranston is so well-schooled in the ways of crime, we shall throw him off guard by leading him in the opposite direction. Oh, I don't understand. Miss Harsh, with many men, a hobby becomes a passion. And in the pursuit of that hobby, they sometimes become blind even to the obvious. Cranston has such a hobby, Chinese porcelain. I think through Chinese porcelain I can persuade Mr. Cranston to become involved in a situation he would ordinarily view with extreme suspicion. Uh, I still don't understand. It's simple. I will maneuver Mr. Cranston into a position where he will say things and do things before witnesses. Things that the court will accept as evidence of premeditated murder. Oh! Then the members of the royal mob will see that the shadow hears of it through the underworld bush telegraph. I see. Uh, incidentally, who's going to be murdered? Tell me, I've almost forgotten. We must have a murderee. Uh, Miss Harsh, you'd better run out and get me a body. Yes, Chief. Oh, oh uh, how do you want it, Chief? Dead or alive? Alive, Miss Harsh. Lamont, come in, come in. So glad you could come. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> um, Margot, may I present uh, Mr. Bob Stone, Miss Margot Lynn? How do you do? How do you do, my dear? Uh, come on in and sit down. I have a pot of tea brewing. Oh, wonderful. Incidentally, Cranston, I have a special treat for you, my boy. We're having our tea Chinese fashion today, and we're going to use these beautiful hand dynasty cups. Uh, sit down, sit down. Uh, you here, Miss Lane? Ah, oh, George, Bob. You didn't buy these handcuffs from the galleries, did you? I did. Right from under your nose. Oh, isn't that just my luck, Marco? My new friend turns out to be a rival collector. Uh, not exactly rivals, Miss Lane. I happen to be partial to hand dynasty art. Lamont, unfortunately, tends toward the Ming dynasty. Oh, now, look here, Bob. You, you don't claim the hand art to be superior to the Ming. Certainly it was. Oh, nonsense. No comparison. There is much to be said for both sides, my boy. However, I will grant you one superiority, and that's the immortal Ming Chalice. Oh, the Ming Chalice. Heavens, what a thing of beauty that is. I never heard of it. It's an exquisite blue chalice, my dear, the only piece of its kind. It disappeared about 15 years ago. It was destroyed in the fire of a Chinese temple. So they say. Such a pity. Every collector in the world is itching to get his hands on it. You too, eh, Lamont? Mm, I certainly am. Ask him how much he'd pay for it, Miss Lane. I'd pay a fortune for it. And you'd steal it if you couldn't buy it. Yes, I think I would. My George, I'd almost be willing to commit murder for that beautiful chalice. <laughs> Beware of all art collectors, Miss Lane. When the fever overcomes them, they become thieves and murderers, like Lamont. Oh, excuse me. Hello? Boss, boss, I've got a body for you. I picked him up down in the slums. Ah, splendid, splendid. Well, what do I do with him? Um, what's your opinion of the merchandise? Look, he's a tramp. He's not very bright. He can do anything we like with him. Uh, very well. I uh, suppose you deliver it to my home as quickly as possible uh, for inspection. Uh, goodbye. Pardon the interruption, my friends. Uh, now, Lamont, uh, prepare yourself for a shock. A shock? Lamont, the Ming chalice wasn't destroyed. I know where you can buy it. What? Staggering news, eh? Yes, it's true. I found the Ming Chalice for you. Suppose you meet me tomorrow at the Oriental Art Gallery, Civic Street. Say around, um, three o'clock. The Ming Chalice there? No, no, I'll say no more. Just meet me, my dear friend. I promise you we'll have quite a surprise in store for you tomorrow. Quite a surprise.
<laughs> All right, Chief. Everything set for this afternoon. You've had the empty store at Civic Street stocked with my collection? Yes, it looks like a genuine art store. Makes a perfect setting for the Cranston killing. Indeed, yes. Is the um, future victim happy? Happy as a lark, Chief. He's had a wash and plenty of solid food and a good night's sleep. We certainly fattened him up for the slaughter. Oh, don't let's be coarse, Miss Harsh. We must be solemn in the face of death. Uh, please bring the happy gentleman in. Oh, right away. Oh, I'll come in, Mr. Copper. Mr. Stone wants to speak to you. Mr. Stone, you're, you're awfully nice to an old man like me. I, I got to thank you nonsense, for Nonsense, my friend, nonsense. Frankly, I did this because I want you to do something for me. Oh, what? Help me play a practical joke on a friend. I suppose we go along to my shop in Civic Street and I'll tell you all about it. I'll be glad to help you any way I can, mister. Only I must warn you, I, I haven't much humour inside of me. I've never been able to see a joke. Ah, but you will when I tell you, Mr. Copper. I pledge you my word, it'll kill you. Now, my friends, is everything arranged? I, uh, I think so, Mr. Stone. You'd better hurry, Mr. Stone. It's almost three. He'll be here soon. I'll just go over the details once more. You pretend to be the owner of this store. When my dear friend Lamont Cranston enters, immediately fly into a rage and pretend to threaten him with this revolver. It, uh, it isn't loaded, is it? Only with blanks. Do everything you can to frighten him. It's rather dark in here. He won't be able to see that you're pretending. Yes, yes, I, I understand, Mr. Stone. The whole idea is to frighten him to death. Miss Harsh and I will be concealed behind these curtains. Watch. Mr. Stone, quickly. I can see Cranston driving up the street. Margot Lane's at the wheel. Right. Cranston's getting out. Lane's going to park the car. Splendid. That will delay her just long enough. All right, we'll hide now. <laughs> the joke's just about to begin. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, is my friend Mr. Stone here? Uh, I'm Lamont Cranston. Yes, you're Lamont Cranston. I know you. I've been waiting for you. Oh, what are you doing with that gun? This is the chance I've been waiting for. I'm going to give you what you deserve, Cranston. Oh, stop it, you fool. Give me that gun. <laughs> are you out of your mind? I'll, I'll kill you. I'll let go, will you? Good work, Chief. He's out cold. Hey, uh, Mr. Stone, you... Give me that gun, Miss Hart. Hurry. Miss Lane will be here soon. Mr. Stone. No. No. Well, quickly, Hart. Step out the back door, run round and meet Lane coming in. I'll plant Cranston's prints on this gun with the one shot fired. Right, Chief. Now, Mr. Cranston, let's get your prints on this gun so the shadow will be convinced you're the murderer. And now Copper's revolver must be hidden then out the back door. <laughs> oh, Mr. Stone will be here in a moment. He's just trying to find some place to park his car. Well, I don't envy him. I just... Lamont! Lamont! Why, what... What is Lane? Mr. Cranston's on the floor. And, and that other man. Oh. What... Well, where's the lucky Mr. Cranston? Is he... Oh, Mr. What is this? Mr. Stone, something terrible has happened. Lamont's unconscious and, and that other Why? man... Is, is... He's dead. This is strange. Lamont! Lamont! Oh. Wake up. What's happened here? Oh... Oh, my head. Oh, oh, that stupid man. My dear boy, you must pull your wits together. What happened here? What's the gun doing there? Lamont, what did you do? I... I don't know, Margot. I'm not sure, but... But I think I've just killed this man. <laughs> It looks as though Robert Stone's evil plan will succeed, but the shadow is certain to take a hand in affairs. And now, back to the shadow. It is some time later. The police have been notified of John Copper's death, and we find Lamont Cranston, Margot Lane, Robert Stone, and Miss Harsh in the office of Commissioner Weston at police headquarters. Cranston. I want you to understand something right from the start. Because you're a friend of mine, I'm going to be harder on you than I would on anyone else. Now, you were found in that store with a murdered dealer. He was shot dead with a gun lying close to your hand. Evidently, you'd been in some kind of fight with him. Now, I want you to answer me truthfully. Did you kill him? 
I don't know. Believe me, Commissioner, I don't know. Ah, you don't know. What sort of an answer is that? Well, don't you understand? There was a fight. I, I was knocked out. Perhaps I killed him. I, I, I don't know. Well, why were you fighting? Well, I don't know why. I'd never seen him before in my life. Ah, well, then why were you down there? It was the main challenge. Quiet, Miss Lane. But it was... Don't say anything. Now, just a minute. I'm still police commissioner, Mr. Stone. I'll tell the witnesses what to say. What's this about a Ming chalice? It's a rare work of Chinese art. Lamont was very anxious to buy it. Don't say it, Miss Lane. Don't say what? I... I'm talking to Mr. Stone. Don't say what? Answer. I can't. Mr. Stone, perhaps you're doing Mr. Cranston more harm than good. Perhaps you had better tell the truth. Lamont, it's up to you. What should I do? Well, I don't know what you're trying to conceal, Bob. But the truth never hurt anyone. Tell it. Very well. I was afraid Miss Lane would reveal that Lamont had said, jokingly, of course, that he would cheerfully steal or commit murder for that chalice. Oh, he did, eh? Hey? Cranston, I can't understand this. What's got into you? Commissioner, I don't even know what happened. All I know is I might have killed that dealer. Come on, my boy, you listen to me. We'll get you the best legal defense that money can buy. No matter what happens, Lamont, remember you can trust me. I'm your friend. <laughs> you played that scene beautifully, Chief. <laughs> Too loud, Miss Harsh. Even the entrance of police headquarters may have ears. Oh, Miss Lane will be along soon. What do we do now? Two things. First, have Joe the penman take care of Cranston's claim that he never knew the dead dealer. And you can have Joe forge complete correspondence. Plant some letters in Cranston's flat and in the store. Uh -huh. Make the subject... The purchase of the Ming chalice. Right you are, Chief. Is there anything else? Yes. We've got to make sure the Shadow gets interested in the case. To do this, we'll have to arrange Cranston's escape from jail. Escape? Isn't that step obvious? The Shadow must assume that Cranston is escaping justice uh, because of his friendship with the police. He will. The newspapers are already saying that. In fact, one paper is asking why the Shadow hasn't come into the picture. Fine. Eventually, we arrange it so that the shadow hears I wish to see him. Wait, here comes Lane. Look sympathetic. Oh, not me, Chief. I've got work to do. I'll see you later. Oh, Mr. Stone, this is awful. They, they put Lamont in a cell. There, there, my dear. Oh, you were wonderful inside. I can't thank you enough. My dear, I've got bad news for you. Huh? What do you mean? It was all bluff inside. Lamont is in a very bad position. I doubt if the best lawyers in the world could help him. Oh. oh, no, you can't mean it. We've got to take strong measures if we want to help Lamont. What do you mean? We've got to get him out of jail and out of the country. It's his only hope. But, but how? I'll arrange the details. Go back, Miss Dane. Try and see Lamont. Tell him that escape is his only hope. Tell him to hold himself ready. Tell him that I'm arranging an escape for him. Tell him that his friends will never let him down. Right here, Miss Lane. Now remember, you've only got five minutes. No longer. Thank you. Margot, I'll be back in five minutes. Lamont. Oh, you shouldn't have come back, Margot. This won't do any good. I had to. Lamont, listen to me. I've got a message for you from Bob Stone. Yes? He says he's going to arrange an escape for you. He wants you to get out of the country. He says it's your only chance. He's right, Margot. I've got to get out so the shadow can bear me. Margot. Yes, Lamont. I want you to help me now. Oh, I'll do anything, darling, anything. Scream for the guard. When he gets here, tell him I've escaped. Then the shadow... Yes, Margot. When he opens the door to let you out, the shadow will leave too. Now go ahead, yell. Right. Help! Help! Guard! Help! For heaven's sake, what's happening here? Stop shouting, lady. Lamont, Pratt has escaped. You left the door unlocked and he escaped. Are you mad, lady? I'm not. He locked me in and then escaped. I don't know what the idea is, but that smart Alex probably hiding under his cot. I'll teach him. Uh, lots of clever ones try that. Come out of there, Cranston. Come on. Holy mackerel. This place really is empty. You see, I told you so. Yes, but how am I going to tell the commissioner? <laughs> Uh, 
so Cranston has escaped from jail. I don't know how he did it, but he saved me so much trouble. His escape has ensured his finish. <laughs> I've heard rumors that you wish to see me, Robert Stone. Why, it's the Shadow. It is? Shadow, a great injustice is being done in the murdered art dealer case. Really? Yes, the police have let Cranston escape. So I've heard. Shadow, I've been afraid to tell what I know because of the police. But Cranston did commit that murder. I saw him. That doesn't sound like Cranston, Stone. But it's true, Shadow. And I know other things about Cranston. Oh, this is very interesting. Shadow, have you ever wondered where Cranston got his money? Has it ever occurred to you that being so friendly with the police, he's in a unique position to blackmail criminals or to take money from the police for information? You think that that's how he got his money? I'm positive of it. Shadow... Lamont Cranston is nothing but a thief, a blackmailer, a police informer. And now I'm afraid a murderer. I think you should check up on him, Shadow. Why are you telling me this? I want to see justice done. Mr. Stone, many thanks from the Shadow to you. And I promise, justice will be done. <laughs> Lamont, Lamont. Here, take it easy, darling. I had an idea you'd be waiting for me in your flat. Oh, where have you been? Having a very interesting talk with Bob Stone. How's the shadow? Listen, darling, you've got to act quickly. I've just spoken to Commissioner Weston. The case looks worse than ever. They found out you were lying about not knowing that dealer. Lying? Yes, they found letters in your flat and in the store. I might have expected that. And the gun, the gun that killed him. Now, what about it? Well, they found your fingerprints on it, sharp and clear as crystal. You're sure of that? On the forty-five revolver? Yes, yes, I'm sure. That's the best news I've had in a long time. Lamont, why? Because that's the proof which will clear me. I... I don't understand. You'll understand when I tell you that my very dear friend, Bob Stone, is behind this whole scheme to ruin me. Oh, no. And what's more, I'm going to sheet the whole job home to him by tying a can to that lovely devil of a secretary, Miss Harsh. Everything's fine, Chief. We planted the letters just in time. <laughs> yes, the police must have found it by this time. Splendid work, my dear. Splendid. What do I do now? Hold the fort, my dear. I'm going to an informal meeting of the gang right now. I'll be back in a few hours. Right. Goodbye, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Who's that? Good evening, Miss Harsh. This is the Shadow. Oh. Oh, the Shadow. I've been longing to meet you. Yes, Miss Harsh. It's unfortunate the shadow has overlooked you for so long. Well, it's never too late to make up for lost time, is it? Not for you, Miss Harsh. You've plenty to make up in the state women's prison. What? What are you talking about? Life imprisonment for murder. You're mad. The shadow knows, my sweet murderess. The shadow knows that Lamont Cranston is being held for a murder you committed. That's a lie. It was cleverly planned, Miss Harsh, but not clever enough to fool the shadow. No, no, it's not true. The evidence is being sent to the police commissioner. Inside of one hour, a patrol car from police headquarters will be here. Are you bored, Miss Harsh? No, you, you can't do this to me. I didn't kill him, I tell you. It was... Yes? No. So, let me out of here. Get away from me. It's no use running, Miss Hart. They'll get you for murder. <laughs> Take your seats, gentlemen. Order, please. Order. I call the 34th meeting of the Royal Mob to order. Oh, let her in, someone. Be quick about it. Something's happened. Let me in, Chief, please. Hurry. Oh, Chief. Oh, Chief. The Shadow knows all about us. He, he came to the house just after I spoke to him. What the hell? He's accused me of murder. Said I was going to be sent to jail for it. You've got to help me, Chief. You can't let really him do this to me. Who left? Who wrapped for order? Bush. Look, look, the gavel on your table. It's moving by itself. This is impossible. I call.
call this meeting of the royal mob to order. We will begin the meeting with the calling of the roll. Robert Stone? It's the shadow. Robert Stone, accused by the shadow of leading the royal mob, planning and executing innumerable crimes, attempting to have Lamont Cranston convicted of murder. Get hold of him, somebody, quickly. Gene Harsh. No, no. Accused by the shadow of aiding and abetting Robert Stone in each and every crime. Stop him. Stop him. Stop him. The shadow demands order, gentlemen. Order. Joe the penman, counterfeiter, thief, and confidence man. Pat Murphy, gunman and murderer. The shadow will mark the remaining members of the royal mob as present or accounted for. The shadow announces that all of you will shortly be accounted for by the city police. Listen, do you hear, members of the royal mob? The police have arrived for an accounting. The reign of the royal mob is ended by the shadow. Gentlemen, your meeting is adjourned. <laughs> oh, what a beautiful night for a drive. Where are we going? I hope not to visit any more of your friends. Now, go look at those stars. Wonderful. Listen, what are you so happy about? You've forgotten you're only out of jail on bond. Oh, but everything's cleared up, Margot. Well, except for one little detail. What about that gun with your fingerprints on it? Ah, Margot, that gun is the one thing that'll prove me innocent. Commissioner Weston agrees. Huh? How? Well, oh, simple, my dear. Remember you said my prints were sharp and clear as crystal? Mm-hmm. Well, when you fire a forty-five revolver, it's impossible to leave sharp, clear prints. The gun has too much kick. Obviously, those prints of mine were planted on that gun. Oh, and that's where Stone slipped up. Yes, but he slipped up in another place, too. Where? Well, Margo, I've known all along that Stone was up to something. I played along to find out what it was. Well, you're way over my head, Mr. Cranston. And you see, dear, I knew he was lying about the Blue Ming Chalice. You see, although every collector in the world thinks that it's been lost or destroyed, I happen to know where it is. What? Yes, Margot. It happens to be locked away in a certain lamasery in Tibet. The lamasery where I learned the secret of the shadow. moment I shall return with more news of The Shadow. Next week, same time, same station, another Shadow story. Crime does not pay. The Shadow knows. <laughs> Be sure to listen. This feature was produced by Reg Johnston for Grace Gibson Radio Productions. A masterpiece of suspense.